Our next presentation will be by Andrew Woods, a man who needs no introduction. From Curtin University, thanks for your presentation. Let's welcome Andrew. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, um, colleagues on this project, Nick Oliver from Curtin and Paul Burke from University of Western Australia. And uh, this particular project um, is, uh, the aim has been to develop a VR, virtual reality simulation of Beacon Island, which is a, um, an island off the coast of Western Australia, as, which is part of a, um, the Abrolhos Island chain, uh, which consists of about 100, 100 islands, uh, about 30 kilometres, maybe 20 miles off the West Australian coast. Um, it's the site, formerly, of a, a seasonal fishing base from the 1960s until 2013. And uh, um, more historically, the site of the wrecking of a Dutch VOC ship, the Batavia, in 1629, almost 400 years ago. And in that particular episode, about 100 people perished on the island. And uh, here we can see sort of like a, an elevated view of Beacon Island um, from the simulation itself. Um, so the simulation documents the island as it was in 2014. Um, after the documentation happened, all of the fishing shacks were removed from the island, um, essentially because the fishing activity on the island was incompatible with the site being a very significant archaeological location. Um, so, Unity's been mentioned quite a few times already at the conference, and uh, this simulation was developed in Unity as well. The actual simulation combines a wide range of visualisation methods. A digital elevation model combined with an aerial photograph is, is the, the basic um, backdrop of the, the island. Um, there's some 360 degree panorama bubbles that, that exist across the island, and you can pop your head in those, we'll see that in a moment. Um, all of the shacks were measured and photographs taken of their external walls, and then those um, buildings were manually modelled in, in CAD and brought into the simulation. And then we also used photogrammetric 3D reconstruction for some more complex items on the island, including some of the shallow graves of the people who died during the, in 1629. Um, people can actually follow a guided tour or freely explore the island. Um, so um, the, the purpose has been as essentially a, a, a virtual storytelling tool for perhaps virtual tourism or, or other um, related um, uses. So now if we can grab the polarised 3D glasses. So we arrive on the island on the, uh, the, the jetty and uh, the island uh, the simulation, at least, contains a series of these information panels which uh, the user can uh, stop at and read about the island. This one particularly here talks about uh, the island, the shipwreck, um, and other aspects of, uh, of the simulation. And uh, everything at this point is in 3D. The, uh, the usual acknowledgements. At the bottom of these panels is a, uh, essentially a button where you can automatically navigate to the next one or uh, um, you can use different uh, interaction methods to move the different, uh, different sections of the island. So in front of us is one of the panoramic photo bubbles. And we'll pop our head in that in a moment. The VR simulation has its limitations, so it's not absolutely photographically accurate, whereas having a 360-degree photograph allows us to see exactly what the, the island looks like from that precise location. At this point, it's not in 3D. This is just a 2D panorama, but uh, we could have done it in 3D. So as we continue along the, uh, the path here, uh, this advertises the fact that uh, um, there's a little postcard that uh, um, can um, 
be grabbed to uh, have the download details for the, uh, uh, the program. Uh, it's available in a range of different ways. Here's another view of the island from a slightly closer location. Um, Correct, yes. I'll, I'll mention that in a few moments, but uh, the postcard has a download link, or a link to learn more about the, uh, the simulation, uh, and it's also available on the, uh, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store as well. Yeah. Oh, here's the, uh, the toilet with the, uh, the best view on the island. facilities on the island are rather basic. It's in the middle of nowhere. And so here, there are, those are the, uh, the footprints on the island. It's, it's a rather subtle um, indication of um, sort of a suggested track. People don't have to follow that, but that's where all of the information panels are. And it takes you through the, the key parts of the island. So all of the, the shacks um, look very lifelike from the outside, but uh, internally, um, they're, as we'll find out in a moment, they're essentially just um, empty rooms. This is where the people, the, uh, the people who worked in the fishing industry lived. And as we move into the, uh, the room, we'll see that it's uh, just an empty shell with a photo bubble in here. So you can see what it's like by way of the photo bubble, which significantly simplified the process of uh, modelling it in the, uh, the simulation. So it had power on the island through generators, but everything else was, was quite basic. So, uh, oh, here we go, see the other room, there's, there's no insulation. Don't mind the empty bottles. So the simulation served as a documentation of what the island used to look like in terms of the shacks. But it also allows people to visit the island, um, a place that they will likely not be able to visit themselves and uh, partly because of its isolation but partly also that's uh, due to the uh, protection, uh, due to the her heritage significance. And uh, over here is a, a cairn or a memorial made out of uh, pieces of coral and that's been modelled using the, uh, the photogrammetric 3D reconstruction technique. So some of the items on the island have a lot more detail on them and have been reproduced using that technique, and some of the other aspects on the island are, are fairly basic. So now we're navigating towards um, part of the island which has got some of the shallow graves. So the information panels you know, provide information about the current, the future, and uh, it, the heritage past. OK, so at this stage, there's been uh, roughly 20 skeletons that have been discovered on the island. They're all relatively shallow. The highest point on the island is perhaps only a, a metre above sea level. And uh, this particular location has, uh, I think it was, it says on the information panel, contains six individuals. And I'll just look down in a moment. The uh, 3D reconstruction allows the, uh, the nature of the burial to be, to be seen quite precisely. So I'll just tilt down in a moment. There we go. Yeah, so that's this one of sorry, six of uh, 20 individuals that have been discovered on the island. 
All right, we'll switch back into the uh, presentation now. Thanks, Dan. So part of the aspect of this presentation is the fact that the, uh, the, the simulation that we've developed has been able to be rolled out to lots of different plat platforms quite easily. Um, and I'll, I'll list through 16 different platforms that, w that we've uh, exported the project to. So it's available um, off the website for desktop use um, on Windows and Macintosh. Um, the next stage was actually developing a, um, a version that could run in a web browser. Um, that necessitated that we have a, the ability to considerably simplify the experience. You can only, or well, we found that we could only have a 25 megabyte download with this um, platform, which did mean that we had to cut out several aspects of it, but um, there was reference in that particular version to the higher end version, so it's, it's almost a taster. The desktop version was the reference platform and um, was from which we developed all the others. Um, I'll explain in the next slide that uh, the, the reason for developing a touchscreen version, but uh, that um, um, changed the interaction technique from keyboard and mouse to uh, just using a touchscreen only. Um, from there, we've also developed um, a head-mounted display version, uh, which can run on uh, Google Cardboard, both iPhone and Android. It can be downloaded from both of those stores. Uh, the Gear VR for, from Samsung, and also the high-end uh, HMDs from Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, and also the four large-scale display systems that we have at the Hive, and as well as being ex able to export the footage from the simulation, which is what we were just looking at then, in a range of different formats, which we can upload to YouTube. Um, YouTube 3D 360 in 4K is the, the, the latest um, uh, version. And um, having it able to be run on those multiple different formats means that uh, the, the experience is much more accessible. So the exhibition, or the touchscreen version, uh, was developed because we wanted to use the simulation as part of an exhibition that was taking place at the Western Australian Museum. It was going to have a six-month run, but in discussion with the museum, um, they didn't have the capability of dedicating a staff member to the to running it on with a head mount display over that period of time. So we decided to um, develop the experience so I could run on a 55 inch touchscreen. And just down there on the right is uh, the postcards and people could then um, take it home and uh, view it on their own systems. Um, potentially it could have been that we had uh, the Google Cardboard viewers in the, uh, the store which was just around the corner and then people could use their own devices right there and then while they are interested in the, uh, the experience. Um, this is the hive at Curtin. It's a 15 metre by 15 metre space, a uh, former gallery space. On the left is the tile display, 24 megapixel display. Then there's the cylinder display, 3 metres high, 8 metre diameter. And uh, we can fit, oh, we can run that in 3D as well. Um, next is the wedge display, which is two panels a bit like just a small version of a wedge, but just only two walls. And on the right-hand side is a uh, half, four-metre half dome uh, with the top and bo bottom truncated, and there's a projector up that um, projects onto all those surfaces. So we've uh, developed the simulation to run on all, on all of those uh, different platforms. The one that we find most impressive is the, um, the, virtu is the cylinder display. And um, the advantage of that display, similar to what Doik was mentioning, is that uh, um, you're, you're able to have a group or a collaborative experience. Um, so we can fit roughly 20 to 25 people standing in front of this display, 50 seated. And um, it, uh, yeah, it's really quite a, um, immersive and uh, realistic and uh, um, has a lot of wow factor. Um, so. We've had a few examples of where we've used that with a large audience and uh, combined it with um, more traditional lecture material. We can also use this display with 
a, a slideshow. So here's uh, one of the curators from the museum, Karali Suta, who's uh, talking about the history of the Batavia and uh, the science of the archaeology that's being conducted. And then we took the audience on a virtual tour of the island and uh, gave them experience of what it's like there. So we are continuing to develop the simulation. We've recently received a grant um, from the Australian gov government, Department of Environment, to, uh, um, to conduct further development on this project. The most requested addition that we noticed while it was running for six months at the museum as part of the exhibition was people wanted to visit the wreck site. Um, we had a little marker in the distance. It was 1.5 kilometres off the coast of the island and uh, you'd see people touching that little icon. They wanted to go out there and see that. So that's what we're working on next. And um, um, fortunately, another aspect of this project, which is, is already um, fairly well progressed, is that in the 1970s when they discovered, well, they discovered the wreck in 1960s and then in the 1970s they um, surveyed and also excavated the site. And they took around, I think it was around 3,000 underwater photographs of that site. And um, um, from that, we're developing 3D models of the actual wreck itself. We're also experimenting with Google Expeditions, plus various other enhancements. So here's one of the 3D models of the wreck site is, um, um, that's been reconstructed from those 3,000 images. So the transom is just here, and these are some of the uh, uh, the timbers of the, the hull, the side hull, and we can import those models into the simulation. So you can download it now. Um, there's uh, a web link there. Um, feel free to take a, an image of the screen. Um, and in conclusion, this is an example of a single project being deployed to multiple platforms. Um, it's a massive saving on development time and effort and cost and increasing the reach and accessibility of the simulation. So um, um, come and have, try it out and um, download it and um, yeah, open for questions. <laughs>